I'm Gerard Murphy from Bon Voyage Cruises and Travel. I'm joined as usual by Olivia Van Lira. Welcome. Thank you. How are you? Good. And good. You? Very good, thank you. Good. And we're also joined by Tony Smith. Hi, Tony. Good. How are you? Tony represents Holland America Line. And today we're going to be talking about new things. Uh, Tony's uh, got a brand new ship, so he's going to talk about that. And uh, later in the show, we're going to head out to Auckland Airport. United Airlines is arriving back in New Zealand for the first time in 20 odd years. They're bringing a brand new 787 aircraft. So we're going to take a camera and have a look at that as well. But first, Tony, Holland America is new and old because it's been around for mm. 100 and over 140 years. Yeah. So it's one of the oldest cruise mm. lines, one of the oldest shipping lines. It made its uh, way in the world from Holland, of course, mainly transporting uh, cargo first and then. Uh went into um, uh, passengers between uh, Rotterdam and New York. So it's interesting times in Europe. Um, yes, very interesting <laughs> times in Europe. You cruised there recently, as I did. Um, yeah, i just come back, yes, and, and uh, visited places like Greece and uh, Kusadasi in Turkey. Um, felt completely safe, didn't even think about anything, just there and enjoying, oh sorry, working. But <laughs> <laughs> We're always working with you, don't you worry about that. But, en but enjoy myself and, and um, doing the excursions and, and everything was running smoothly and, and uh, everybody was happy, it was, it was great. Just see a bunch of happy, happy, happy people. That's what we like. I know, <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, Conning's Dam, the new ship, is a bit of a departure for Holland America because um, the ones I've seen and certainly I think the general perception is that Holland America has classical cruise ships, so yeah. they're like <coughs> the, the old liners, lots of um, timber and... They are, they are. Um, Conning's Dam is, is, is fairly well the same. It's got, got the outside teak decks that you can walk around and, and all that. It's really the changes are, are inside, um, although not, not huge changes. They're, they've more gone a little bit modern, different style lounges, um, uh, smaller areas that people can, can uh, congregate and um, more dining experiences. Mm. Now, I saw that, I did, I've done a little bit of research and, <laughs> and I see there's some new dining experiences and the culinary arts at sea is uh, something yeah, they, they Holland America's had for a while and they've expanded that. Can you tell us They have expanded what that. that. So, so what they've done is they've, they've actually taken a dedicated area um, for the culinary arts centre and um, you can go and do the cooking demonstrations, etc., in there, and it, it, it's all fully glassed, so people can, can see it from the outside looking in. But in the evening, it turns into a uh, farm-to-table restaurant. Mm -hmm. So you can watch the chefs cook, cook your meal. They grow their own herbs. Um, on board. On board. Oh, um, wow. like, like the um, curry herbs and, and all those sort of things. I'm not a great herbalist, but, <laughs> um, but you can see them all growing there. So you've told us about the culinary arts restaurant. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a bit more about the other restaurants on yeah, board? Yeah, certainly there's a pan-Asian restaurant called uh, Tamarind. Um, that has its own separate bar so people can actually have an evening out. They can go and have a pre-dinner drink or an after-dinner drink. Then they've got a nice pan-Asian style um, menu. And new on the conning stem is they've introduced a sushi bar as well. So if, oh, if you just cool. want to have a sushi night out, then, then you can do that. Um, they're also open for lunch, mm -hmm. um, where they do a, a dim sum style um, menu as well. Nice. Then you have uh, Sal de Mer is a brand new restaurant that we have on board, and it's sort of a, a, a seafoody style, style restaurant, and that's all a la carte. So it's really like dining in a restaurant ashore. Um, you're paying per... Um, Per meal and... Entree, yeah, main, yeah, yeah. dessert, per course. That, that yeah, sort of... Yeah, per course. Per course. Right, 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 right. Uh, Full a la carte, so yeah. um, you have a choice in that. It's not a huge restaurant, it probably seats about 40 or 50. Um, so it's, uh, it looks... I didn't get to, to enjoy that, but I did have a look at the um, menu and it looked absolutely superb. Yeah. Then we've got the um, Italian restaurant, um, which is uh, situated exactly like it is on all our other ships up in the, the Lido restaurant. Um, and then you've got your two main restaurants, whether you have sit, set dining or whether you have as you wish dining mm. as well. Ooh, and then ra throughout the ship, you've got your cafe and, and all that too. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned a charge uh, for one of the restaurants. Yeah, uh, Tamarind is uh, $20. Um, culinary theatre is free. Um, oh, cool. And the um, Italian restaurant is 10 I believe. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. So those are a small cover charge above your cruise fare, but uh, there's plenty of uh, dining establishments without having to pay a cover charge. But when you do pay the cover charge, I can guarantee you those dining experiences are pretty special, and I think you'd agree yeah, with that. I agree with that, and, and I did forget to mention that we have got the um, Pinnacle Grill, which is on all our ships as well, which is our fine dining restaurant, and that's a $30, $30 charge. Mm. That one. <laughs> yeah, that one is. That one is, you need to know which order your knives and forks go in. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's where you've got your three and four hundred dollar plates, and, and uh, oh, it's, it's wow. full um, Atlantic, uh, sorry, um, Pacific Western cuisine with your steaks and your lobsters and, mm. and your sole and your, um, all your fishing. So it's a really small cover charge, really fair. Oh, for, for what you get meals. for your meal, it, it's, yeah. it's actually very, very small. In fact, some people dine in there every night, even though they don't change the menu. Some people do oh, dine there wow. every night. And it <laughs> is a reservation <laughs> restaurant. So Yeah. yeah. Ah, delicious. So what else is new on board? Okay, they've, they've got um, what they call the Grand Dutch Cafe on the, on the conning stand. Now, the Grand Dutch Cafe is, is straight opposite the reception area. And it's um, basically where you can get all your Dutch coffees and, and all that. And what I found on the conning stand was when I was on there, is everybody is using it as the meeting place. So if you're going to meet somebody, oh, I'll meet you at the Grand Dutch Cafe. Yeah. And you can get Dutch, like green pea soup and all that sort of thing. It's there you go, that'll appeal yeah. to you. Um, <laughs> they've got alcohol there and all that, so you can get a beer or, or a spirit or, or whatever, as well as a coffee. Oh, and cool. and um, uh, there's some, of the, some of the items there have got a small charge for the... For the um, snacks but most of it is complimentary so it's, um, so it's a huge area and uh, plenty of seating um, and in all the tables which uh, some of them have got like bar, bar uh, leaners have got um, the old Delft china in, in the middle there so you can get like a little museum and all bring that. some of the, yeah. Yeah. the history yeah. and heritage exactly back. of Holland America I'm back yeah mm. now obviously with the new ship there's going to be all sorts of new technology and I think where things are changing most on some of the new cruise ships is entertainment. So, yeah, well, what's new there? Entertainment on Holland American Line uh, on the Connings Dam has, has changed a lot. The, the theatre, for instance, the main theatre, um, has got a 180 degree um, screen, so that that fits in with the shows and all that. So while it's going on up there, it's also going down down beside you. Then you've got the uh, Lincoln Centre, which is uh, brand new to Holland American Line. And that involves where the um, string quartet normally perform. So I went to a uh, performance there and thoroughly enjoyed it. A little bit of old classical stuff, and then a lot of um, modern rock with the with the uh, um, violins and the oh, yeah. uh, guitars and that sort of thing. So it was oh, cool. all blended in quite nicely. It's about a forty-five minute show, but it, but it was quite crowded. Mm -hmm. And then they've got um, on Broadway, which is. Uh, where they've taken away the old piano bar and put two pianos in. So you've got two pianists playing. Oh, dueling pianos. Dueling, oh, dueling cool. pianos against right. each other. <laughs> and, and that area there was quite quite full as well. Um, and and then they've got um, up on the crow's nest there, they have a, have a guitarist in that as well. So, so with the Lincoln Centre and its uh, classical music heritage, is that a permanent fixture? Yes, and they're, they're, bringing, they're, they're doing it in conjunction with the Lincoln Centre in New York, I think it is. Right, so it's a full partnership. Yep. And yes. it'll be there every night. Every night. Every cruise. Three or four sessions a night. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> it is, yeah. Because normally a lot of these shows and things come on a cruise ship for, you know, maybe a two or three month period and then they're moved to another ship. And no, and they're, they're starting to put it onto the other ships as well. So it's, it's going to be a evolving thing with the Holland America Line um, ships itself. So you'll have uh, cuisine, heritage... Classical music. You don't need to go anywhere else, Joe. No. Yeah. <laughs> Holland America Line, and that's it. You got your holiday all in one. <laughs> so, now, uh, the Conning's Dam. Where is it cruising? At the moment, she's uh, based in Amsterdam and, and doing around the Baltic Baltic areas. Um, and then she'll go into she'll come out of um, there at the end of October, early November, and go into the Mediterranean. Um, and then next year, she heads back up into um, the Mediterranean. And where are we going to sleep when we go on the ship? What are well, the difference in the rooms? Yeah, well, Conningsdam is, uh, is, as we know, is Holland America Line moving forward and, and trying to uh, cater for, for a lot of different ages than what it previously has. Um, they've developed staterooms that can hold up to five people, so families of that's five, cool. for instance, if, if I travel, I've normally got to buy two staterooms. Yeah, two that's always difficult yeah. when you have three kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. three kids, and, and not that the three kids would want to stay with mum and dad anymore, <laughs> but... but 
you know, it's it's available there with with a, a cabin or a stateroom that, that will hold five. Yeah. Um, and for the single travellers now, they've also developed some single cabins on board as well. And, and normally the poor old single traveller has, has had to um, do a surcharge on, on a twin twin cabin. Yeah, they've got to pay right. for both halves so of the room. Yeah, yeah. exactly, like yeah. a hotel sort of thing. Yeah. Um, whereas now we've got a dedicated um, single rooms for, for those. And then we've got our suites and our penthouses and... Um, you, you, mm. Your Neptune Lounge for those that are in the in the higher category suites. So the same categories are there. Now, Tony, as you know, uh, Bon Voyage TV does require a, a weekly special. <laughs> of course. So, got anything <laughs> up your sleeve? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, look, we can we can chat certainly about um, the deals. There's, there are some coming out shortly, um, which I'm sure you'll you'll be pushing. But what we'll offer right now is um, for those that, that do book, um, we'll give them a complimentary dinner in the Tamarind. Oh, uh, lovely. Yeah, nice. So there you are, a free bonus dinner. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> and uh, we'll come back after the break and we'll talk about a specific cruise. Holland America Line invites you to write the next great chapter in your life story. A story of classic style and discovery. A story that appeals to all your senses including your sense of wonder, where you come face to face with the world's faces and do more than just visit great places. You taste, touch, and feel them. Come, savor the journey. Call your travel professional or visit hollandamerica.com. Ed and Vivo, we've got the biggest crush on Graham Norton. So we flew all the way to his place so he could have a crush on us. <laughs> Graham Norton's own Sauvignon Blanc. Southern Hemisphere grapes meet Norton Hemisphere fab. Welcome back. Um, Tony's going to stay with us for the rest of the show because uh, he wants to see what we're talking about next. And I've got another question to ask him um, at the end. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, United Airlines have started uh, flying back into New Zealand uh, from San Francisco this week. And we were out at the airport to welcome them, have a look at the new plane and ask some questions. Hi, we're at Auckland Airport. This is a Bon Voyage TV field trip. Uh, we're here today to welcome United Airlines who are flying in non-stop from San Francisco. It's the first time they've been here since 2003 and we're really looking forward to uh, welcoming them. We're going along to a press conference and then they're going to give us a tour of the plane, so it's looking good. Great to be in New Zealand, I must tell you. I just arrived on the uh, first flight uh, and it was a spectacular experience. Uh, Jared Murphy, Bon Voyage TV. The, as I understand it, the joint venture uh, with Air New Zealand is just for the US market. Um, what ambitions do you have to take New Zealanders or bring people from Europe, South America, etc., through San Francisco to New Zealand? I think we're just focused on making the existing uh, joint venture work. It's very new. Uh, we have had a wonderful time working with uh, the Air New Zealand team at headquarters. Uh, Cam Wallace, of course, is the Chief Commercial Officer, Nick Judd's in from uh, the Vice President of the Americas, uh, and their whole teams, and uh, Julie and others coordinating with our alliance group. Uh, we just want to ensure we have success between the United States and New Zealand first. Um, I think we always have big ambitions, and we think if it would be in the benefit of the companies and shareholders and the communities we serve, we would always seek opportunities to expand. But nothing planned other than today. Let's make this work, and uh, if we can do that, we'll carry on from there. As you can see behind us, the flight crew have arrived, so uh, things are really, action's really starting to heat up. Uh, we're about to go on board and have a look at this plane and show you what it's like on the inside. So we're now seated in uh, what United call Economy Plus, and what is the plus, you're asking? Uh, the plus is the additional leg room. So if you look at me, I'm five foot ten and three quarters, I like to say, over five foot ten, and I've got about uh, six inches of leg room, plenty of space. Um, we have got um, in-seat video, of course. Uh, also on the plane is Wi-Fi. So it's got all the mod cons. New 787, it's looking good. We're on board now with Dave Hiltman from United Airlines. Uh, you've just flown in this morning. I hope you had one of these nice seats up in business class. I was very fortunate and privileged to sit in business first, but yeah, it was a great flight in. Loved the Dreamliner and yep. so happy to be in New Zealand. And I understand this uh, business class we've only got maybe for up to eight or nine months or a year, and you've got a 
the brand new uh, version of it coming? We do. Uh, as great as this one is, we've decided to innovate and enhance it, and it's called Polaris. And so it's not just a seat, although that's going to be extraordinary because it's all aisle access. Uh, so nobody has to crawl over anybody. That's yeah, always good. That. That's a good thing. But it's the in-flight uh, meals, total enhancement, that and the wines. Probably have some of those great New Zealand wines on board. Good. Also, you enhanced audio, video and demand, Wi-Fi, plus new Saks Fifth Avenue bedding. We have a new tie-in with Saks Fifth Avenue okay. in New York. Yeah. So, yeah, just everything you'd want uh, when you're flying in a premium cabin. So Polaris is going to be quite extraordinary. It's, it launches December 1st. The seats will take a while as they come yep. in on new airplanes or we retrofit the uh, others. But, yeah, pretty excited about it. Now, you mentioned uh, earlier at the press conference that uh, going through San Francisco, there's now a good number of destinations New Zealanders can get to just with one stop. Yes. It was 40, was it? Yeah, four, there's 40 cities uh, that you can fly beyond San Francisco, which in and of itself is an incredible yep. area, you know, the Bay Area, with all the great business and high tech and tourism locations. But yeah, 40 cities that just one stop on United you can get to now, where previously you didn't. You had right. to, you know, change in different places. And so, yeah, we're excited about that. I think folks in New Zealand are going to be thrilled, and the folks in the United States. Conversely, they can connect through San Francisco and to get down here, and that's what we're we're, we're excited about that. So on, on the average aircraft, uh, you've got 230-odd seats. How many uh, Americans coming to New Zealand as tourists do you expect versus New Zealanders uh, going to the States? Well, we always like to have a nice balance if we can, generally just because of our size and, and recognition in the United States. It's often a little higher point of sale in the United States than it is at international points of sale, but it varies. Uh, we like to think that ultimately we have at least 50% coming from New Zealand and 50% on the United States. I think it'll be a little higher to start on the U.S. side. Yep. And you know, as I mentioned in the press conference, uh, I was reading some publications recently, over 30 million Americans have identified specifically that New Zealand is on their travel wish list, call that's, it their bucket that's list. That's a huge number. Huge, but you know, <laughs> yeah. big country, 350 million people. That's, I'm not surprised because New Zealand, the beauty, the people, uh, obviously great sport teams, <laughs> culture, everything you've got going, great golf courses. Uh, I'm not surprised so many people want to come down and, and the notoriety through all the movies. So uh, yeah. I think it's uh, it's going to be good for United, Air New Zealand, and, and everybody here. That's my, I, I don't want it to be a rude question, but yeah. uh, American carriers generally um, aren't, haven't been well known for their in-flight service and general standard. I know United's done a lot of work over the last few years, particularly what's changed? Um, how are you bringing things uh, sort of back up to compete with some of the best carriers worldwide? Well, that's a fair question, but I think we've changed dramatically over the last few years, certainly after merger with Continental, uh, new airplanes, uh, refurbish uh, some of the older ones that are still quite modern and, and uh, fuel efficient and, and customer friendly. Uh, but enormous investments in the billions between the fleet, our facilities, the product, the food, Wi-Fi, entertainment, I mean everything and most importantly in our investment in our people, so better tools, technology, um, and you got people that love working for United Airlines and, the, and obviously we flew here previously, uh, both Continental and United, uh, but this is a whole new United and so we're excited, we have a great joint venture with Air New Zealand. Uh, we follow. We know we have great competition, so we never take for granted the competition that we have out there. We have to be the best, and I think our friends in New Zealand, all the Kiwis out there, will find. Wow, United! This is this isn't your your father's or grandfather's United. This is the new United. This is new. That's great. Well, we are really pleased to welcome you back, and um, I understand you may be going to a certain rugby match and. November in Chicago? Oh, I am indeed. Get to go to the All Blacks versus the Test Match with Ireland. And you know who I'm rooting for right here. Uh, uh, it's going to be great. And uh, we're excited to have everybody in our hometown of Chicago. Uh, so uh, go, go All Blacks, right? Yeah. Well, luckily, I've uh, already booked a ticket up there. So uh, outstanding. I will see you there, maybe. But, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely see you there. I can tell you, if you are betting, just put the money on the All Blacks so you won't lose. Okay, I'm with you all the way. It sounds like a winning bread. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Dave. We're really pleased United's come back and uh, look forward to sending you lots of passengers. Thank you. It's an honor to be back. It's party time here at the International Terminal at uh, Auckland Airport. Uh, United Airlines' first service to San Francisco is about to depart. They've put on a wee party for passengers and for media, and uh, we're all enjoying it. And back in the studio, that was a wonderful new aircraft. Mm -hmm. Very nice, all new, and um, to have uh, another airline flying to the States 
Tony, as you know, after many years in the travel industry, uh, having lots of operators just creates competition purely because they're there and they must oh, yeah. you know that all right. start yeah. battling it out. That's right. What does that do? It creates uh, a lot of benefit for all the travellers. Yeah. Mm. Not only low affairs, but you see um, choice. choice and you see the quality of the aircraft, mm. lie flat beds in business class, mm. um, Wi-Fi on the plane. I don't know why anyone wants Wi-Fi on a plane, but... It's actually quite handy. I was it? using it quite a lot recently. Yeah, especially if you're on a work trip or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. It was just to, uh, yeah. when when you get a lull, just to clear your emails or, yeah. or whatever. Oh, I'm trying to hide. I do get a bit of a shock there when somebody phoned me. <laughs> oh. oh my god! <laughs> I didn't know that they could phone you while you're in the oh, air. Oh wow! So it was a like a FaceTime type thing or a Skype? No, call. it was just a normal phone call. It was. Uh, it was a uh, guess me when I put my heater in, so I thought, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's wow. right, I'll talk to you when I get it. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, it was embarrassing. I thought it was embarrassing. So we have all this modern technology. We've got Wi-Fi on board, lie flat beds. Mm, mm. It's all wonderful. But some of these things have been done before, as you have found mm, out. Absolutely. Flying wasn't always as harrowing as it is today. Before the age of baggage fees, paying for meals and drinks, 100 mil liquid limits, shoes off security, taking to the skies was a privilege. Take a look at these beautiful photos of flying back in the 50s. Even in tourist class, it was rare to encounter a traveller who wasn't dressed for the occasion. Hats, suits and fresh flower corsages were all de rigueur. In tourist class, passengers enjoyed a generous 40 inches of legroom. These days, economy seats have an average of 30 inches. In the 1950s, tourist class was an instant hit. There were no air bridges or runway buses in the 50s. A red carpet connected the plane with the airport arrivals lounge, lavish. The DC-6 was one of the most popular passenger planes of the day, and so shiny. But planes flew at about 25,000 feet, even in bad weather, so the ride was often very bumpy. Air sickness was a common problem. At the back of the aircraft, there was often a lounge for first class passengers to mingle in. For the high-flying executive of the day, this was the place to scout new business deals and entertain clients. The return trip from London to Sydney cost more than a whole year's average salary. That's a good enough excuse to break out the fascinator, corsage and white leather gloves. It might look lovely, but planes of the era were extremely noisy and vibrated thanks to the reciprocating piston engines. That's more than enough to make you spill your sherry. Hmm. Yep, some of those things were done before, the um, stand-up restaurants on board and bars and yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. And it went away and now it's come back again. It's coming back. back. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So we're getting a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. Not, you're flying way higher and much less air sickness. Yeah. I love the idea of dressing up for the occasion though, you know. I mean, God, I see being on big long-haul flights and people have got their slippers on and their jammies on and all that sort what of thing. What I always find rather uh, annoying is the guys in the front row of economy or whichever class with their feet up on the bare feet up on the wall. I think that's just a mm. little that's bit That's your little pit hay. That's my pit hay. Grubby, hate. grubby yeah. feet. So Tony, you've done a lot of flying particularly this year. Any pet hates? Yeah, flying economy. <laughs> 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 no, not not, not really. It's it's um it, it's the normal normal thing. It's uh, the queues trying to get on the on the plane, it's um that sort of thing or if you're sitting in economy and, and there's somebody that's arrogant enough to keep their seat back when they're not putting it up for dinner or, or anything like that, it's really no, not, got, yeah. uncomfortable. not much. Mm. It's uh, usually just go with the flow. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And uh, you've recently come back from a, a nice cruise around the Mediterranean. Yes. What's your number one cruising hint? Well, my yes. number one cruising hint would be, I did a few shore excursions and um, it was it was quite... Um, in Europe, you know that, that everything's co all cobblestony, um, and, and especially with a lot of the ruins and that. And having a decent pair of footwear, running shoes, or something to, to wear when you when mm. you're doing those excursions, they're long excursions. Some of them are all day, mm. um, and just seeing what some people were wearing, jandals or <laughs> um, you know good shoes and, and that sort of thing, and they weren't comfortable. And they were they were really sore feet when they got back. And the other thing was was it was so hot just to be drinking plenty of water. 
Yeah, because um, you do you know, get caught out otherwise, don't you? You do get yeah. caught out, and a, and a nice cold beer is all right, but not, yeah. you know, it, uh, when you're still walking around all the time, have, to have a couple of litres of water with you is, is, is well worth yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. I would recommend that to anybody. Yeah. And they don't have many bars on the cathedrals or ruins. No, or no, 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 they do outside, but, <laughs> but yeah. not inside. And sometimes, like uh, when we, we looked at uh, did Pompeii and, and that, you're in there for a couple of hours, and, and um, mm. uh, just the heat coming off the... Off the um, stones and, and all that, it was getting up to 38, 39 degrees in there. It was, it was very, very hot. Yeah. So yeah. Wish, I, the wish, wish I was still there, there, actually, <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a minute, Jared. We haven't given the viewers the special. Do you think I've forgotten? Well, I thought maybe. No. Right. Tony, and I dis Tony and I have discussed it, and we've got this great special for you to consider. We've had a quick chat with Tony and he's given us a great deal for anyone that books on the new Connings Dam in 2016 or 2017. Uh, Tony and Holland America Line are going to give you a free dinner in the Tamarind restaurant, it's a specialty restaurant, and 100 US dollars per cabin to spend on board. All you have to do is book in July. And we have looked at one of the cruises that we really love and put it together as a fly cruise. So this cruise is a 12-night cruise from Rome back to Rome. So we've included Singapore Airlines flights, three nights pre-cruise in Rome at the Diana Roof Garden Hotel. It's right in the centre of Rome. A 12-night Spain and Italy cruise on the magnificent Coningsdam. One night back in Rome. All your taxes, your onboard tipping gratuities, and of course that Bon Voyage bonus. So you get the free tamarind dinner and 100 US dollars to spend on board. All of this for a 16 night fly cruise starts from just 6299 or an ocean view cabin at 6899 a balcony veranda at 6999 and if you want to spend a little bit more and really get into the luxury 9199 for a vista suite and 9899 for the signature suite and they are just superb those cabins so if you want to get the best of that bonus book in July and uh, Tony and Holland America will look after you with a wonderful bonus. Call Bon Voyage on 0800 266 869. That's 0800 Bon Voyage. Or check our website, bonvoyage.co.nz. So thanks for that deal, Tony. That'll allow our viewers to uh, head off to Europe and enjoy Konigsdam. It looks like a fantastic ship. Uh, I'm available to go at any time, by the way. I'll remember that. <laughs> but before you go... And me too. <laughs> And Olivia, of course. We can come in Gerard's place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good idea. Deal. I'm okay. way more fun. No. <laughs> I'll go with that. But before you go, it's customary uh, for our guests to take away a bottle of Invivo Graham Norton wine. So oh, thanks thank you. very much for coming. No, thank you. Enjoy that. It's and, great. Uh, yep. We look forward to helping Phil Connings down with kiwis. I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to that. And Dutch kiwis if they have to go. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So that. Uh, my dear people, is uh, basically 30 minutes up at the end of the show. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so until next week, bon voyage. Bon voyage.